that's the uh, short term solution for lighting in here. It's just a work light. I'm using it to light up the ceiling while I'm working on it. But I'm still a few days away from actually hooking up the solar uh, bag in the basement. I'm going to get a little bit more of that exterior stuff done. But I have the last two parts I've been waiting forever um, for for the uh, racking system to put the panels on that tilting rack. And that should arrive in the next couple of days. So I think I'll just keep an eye on the weather. Pick a nice uh, dry day that's fairly warm and uh, hook up those panels and just hook up all the wires inside the conduit and get that into the basement and then I can take probably a good day just to mess around with electricity like running the wires I have the switch you know I got all the switches on the wall there and the power or wires run 14-2 wire run from those switches to the lights that's one string so I've got end up doing separate switches so I've got one switch I think for these three lights here in a row one switch for that uh, sort of chandelier that hangs over for the kitchen table and another switch that turns on light in the breezeway and one at the bottom of the stairs so top of the stairs and bottom of the stairs uh, so that's run but what's not run is all the lighting probably at least one socket down there but I need some uh, DC direct current wire run from the bank over to the freezer and to the uh, toilet up here in the corner that composting toilet's got a little fan and little fans yeah little fans that I have going in the cellar so I gotta run that wiring gotta run the wiring for lighting down in the cellar and then also sockets for up here so probably uh, I'm going to do one socket here, socket in the bathroom, socket there, one in the kitchen. Yeah, actually, that's more than I thought. It's almost going to be like code, like every 12 feet. One in each corner, I guess. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. And then here, I don't know if we'll do a separate one right here in the sort of the, the wall between the bathroom and the, this little living area. Um, I think though I'm going to put a sconce on the wall instead of a lamp plugged in. Oh, so then bathroom stuff like lighting and uh, socket, but also that exit going out that door into the future bedroom. Have to run that wiring or get a junction box put right there and I'll run some wire to it and then that can be expanded into that bedroom once that's built and also the outdoor kitchen. So I'll run. Yeah, I'll probably put a junction box out there maybe just run one line so they can have some power and definitely some lights oh that's actually there's another switch over there in the breezeway that turns on a switch or turns on a light that's over the door at the outside of the breezeway which will actually end up being inside the outdoor kitchen lighting that up but I for sure want at least one socket there because I might put the freezer or a freezer out there uh, especially and I might be able to use that for like a game locker like a meat locker and put it on like these solar powered freezers you can put them at different temperatures you can, easy, easy, you can either lose you can either use them as a fridge so at like five degrees celsius or as a freezer at minus 18 celsius zero fahrenheit i think that's freezer temperature so yeah all that lighting has to be run inside so temporarily I've got, I'm still using these gold zero lights that I've had for like what, four or five years now. And the light there, like I said, that uh, work light. And then um, that gold zero power bank and the Jackery power bank. I just alternate them. I charge them with the, the uh, solar out there or generator if I'm not getting any sunlight. And I just switch them back and forth to run that freezer. Anyway, uh, yesterday I went for a drive, my wife and I big loop and uh, just went basically antiquing and just filming like what I call we call b-roll just getting some nature nature stuff looking for wildlife and having fun doing that kind of stuff with Callie taking her swimming and just uh, letting her get out and roam or roam and investigate new areas she loves doing that so what did we pick up this um, 
I'm not even sure what you would call this thing, but it's like a reverse griddle or a weight. So you heat that up. You can, well, you can either heat it up or just use it cold. Put it on top of something that's like frying, let's say, in a frying pan, and that uh, sort of cooks it from above, or at least holds it flat, like say bacon. You could hold flat in the pan like that. So that's pretty cool. Looking forward to using that. Yeah, I needed some more knives and forks and stuff, so I just picked up some little uh, <laughs> looks like fake bone. So, little wood turned bowl. I'll show you that another time. And this big griddle, which I like a lot. It's a Wagner, our favorite uh, frying pan brand. That's going to go on here. And um, actually, it'll fit perfectly that way or that way. And I'll use that to like fry up breakfast so I can get everything on one platter. And then. I found this uh, thing that's on here that you see me using as a sort of a trivet, which is handy. It gets too hot on top of the stove when, you, when you're when you just trying to like simmer something or warm up, say water like this for cooking dish or cleaning dishes. So this elevates it so it's not directly on the heat, but it's too big for the most part. When that's on, it takes up, well, about a third of the stove. So we picked up this smaller trivet with actual metal legs. I don't think it actually has rubber legs because I think it's like from a gas um, range, like a stove top. So this is metal legs proper and it fits like a frying pan or a kettle or something perfectly. It's actually I mentioned many times about not boiling chaga. You're supposed to just let it simmer. If you have the fire going pretty good, this kettle here will actually be boiling and it won't last that long. Now, right now I've got the fire kind of low, but uh, so that's just simmering very slowly, just uh, letting off a bit of moisture and steam. But yeah, you can see that actually. That's the chaga. So having it elevated on there just lets it gently simmer for hours and hours, days actually. I just keep adding water to it. What else did we get? It's little butter dishes with that wood thing is. I guess that's it. Went through this small town and there's a whole bunch of antique stores and general stores. So we just kind of went around and looked at uh, each of them and tried to buy something small from each place. And we ended up in an area that I knew there was a wolf research station or center. And we hadn't been there for, for, I don't know, five years or something. I did a video on it like five years ago doing something else there. And prior to that, it was like 15, 20 years before that, uh, the prior time. So. Anyway, went there and just filmed the wolves. Got, got maybe 15 minutes. We were the only ones there. 15 minutes of them coming out and playing in front of us. Then they went back over the hill, back to the, their preferred area of the pen. But um, yeah, kind of neat just to see their behavior. They're they're fairly wild, even though they're in a seven-acre pen. The uh, glass there is like a two-way glass, and they have very little contact with people. So they actually act pretty wild except they can't hunt obviously they're just given like deer carcasses and stuff but yeah that was fun and getting out uh, getting in the water one last time probably for Callie she still loves going in the cold water for some crazy reason yeah so that's the kind of thing that we often do on days that I'm trying to relax and get my body a break just go for a drive or go for walks, hikes, and uh, take the camera and just uh, film the streams, waterfalls, and and uh, wildlife and stuff like that. That's our like, date day. such a big dam to create a pond back there that it's you know holding a lot of water so you get a lot of flow through. Yeah it's beautiful. And the snow falling. 
and this is what I love the outdoors for, and what I love living outdoors for, experience things like this. Anyway, I'm gonna get back at it, see if I can get a few more boards on here before making dinner. And then hopefully, like I said, I'll finish that likely tomorrow. And they have the ceiling other than sealed, like the edges cocked, the boards will all be on by the end of the day tomorrow, which I'm very relieved. So thanks for watching, appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you back here at the cabin next time. Take care.